ओके दिस इज अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्वेश्चन यू ऑलरेडी प्रॉब्लली नो दिस द नोडल प्लेन्स फॉर डी एक्स वाई लाई इन राइट सो वेन आई एम लुकिंग एट डी एक्स वाई वॉट डू आई नो वो डी एक्स वाई ऑर्बिटल वी नो आउट ऑफ द डी ऑर्बिटल्स थ्री ऑफ दैम लुक सिमिलर टू दिस राइट सो थ्री ऑफ दीज आर बिटवीन द एक्सिस बेसिकली राइट सो हियर स्पेसिफिकली वी आर लुकिंग एट डी एक्स वाई सो दिस इज एक्स एक्सिस एंड वाई एक्सिस एंड दिस इज हाउ योर डी एक्स वाई लाइज एंड एज फार एज द नोडल प्लेन आर कंसर्न देर आर टू नोडल प्लेन दैट यू एंड अप गेटिंग हियर वन इज द वन दैट गोज लाइक दिस सो दिस इज अलॉन्ग वाई जेड प्लेन right so there is one like this obviously if x is like this y is like this then z is out of the board right so out of the board is going to be z so one plane is going to be your z y plane right so one plane is going to be your z y plane and another plane is going to be like this right so like this and that is going to be on your x z plane right so x z plane something like this right obviously um <laughs> you will have to visualize it drawing is not going to really help that much but yeah you can understand that there is going to be one xz plane as well as a yz plane here so yeah looking at the options i am seeing a as well as uh, wait xz and yz plane right so i am seeing both a and b are correct options and d is exactly saying that both a and b are right so my final answer is d option Okay, simple question here. It says an element has atomic number twenty nine. We know what it is, copper, right? It belongs to the period X and group Y. The value of two X plus Y will be. So yeah, first of all, let's write down. So we know it is copper twenty nine, but yeah, whatever. Uh, we are given that uh, atomic number Z is equal to twenty nine. So electronic configuration will be one S two, two S two, two P six, three S two, three P six. 4s2 3d9 is what it should have been it becomes 4s1 and 3d10 right so uh, as far as this element is concerned this is basically um, you are seeing that the highest principal quantum number is 4 so it belongs to what you call as your period 4 right so x is equal to 4 and as far as group number is concerned group number is what number of, uh, when you are looking at um, this uh, d block element this is a d block element right so the last electron went to d10 so this is copper family you can say that this is group number 11 what you can do is you can add the number of d electrons and s electrons to get the group number right so 1 plus 10 11 is the group number so y is 11 so 2x plus y value is what is asked right so 2x plus y will be how much 2x plus y will be equal to 8 plus 11 which is equal to 19 and that is there in our option b Okay this question says the time period of revolution of electron in a hydrogen atom in state n1 is t1 okay and the time period for revolution of electron in a higher orbit n2 is t2 if t2 by t1 is equal to 27 which values of n1 and n2 are not possible right so we are speaking about what you call as time period of revolution what is time period of revolution when an electron completes one circle the time taken is time period of revolution what will this time be this will be the total distance traveled divided by speed right what is the distance traveled one circle so 2 pi r circumference is going to be your distance traveled divided by speed also we know is v right so this is going to be 2 pi r by v which is the time taken for one complete rotation which is what we are calling as time period of revolution now this can be written as 2 pi r not n square by z what is this r not right radius of nth orbit is 0.529 n square by z so that 0.529 angstrom is what i have taken as r not so uh, 2 pi r not into so r is basically r not n square by z and your v is v not z by n Right, so v is 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 z by n meter per second. So if I substitute this, I can see the time period uh, is supposed to be equal to 2 pi r not by v not. These are all constants, mind you. And then I have n square by z by z by n square by z by z by n. I am going to get n cube divided by z square. 
this is the expression general expression for time period of electron in nth orbit in a hydrogen like atom with atomic number z right so this is hydrogen atom so z is uh, one anyways so t1 will be equal to let's call this as t naught this is all constant right 2 pi into 0 0.529 angstrom divided by 2.18 into 10 to power 6 meter per second this is some constant so let me write it as t naught into uh, n1 right so n1 cube divided by 1 square so 1 square i'm ignoring so t1 is t naught into n1 cube similarly t2 will be equal to t naught into n2 cube right so t2 by t1 is given to us as 27 when i divide these two what do i get so from here what i can see is that t2 by t1 will be equal to of course t naught will cancel out and I'm going to get N2 by N1 whole cube. But this is given to us as 27, which we know is 3 cube. Therefore, N2 by N1 is supposed to be equal to 3. Wherever this is satisfied is good for me. So N2 by N1 is 3. Nice. This is fine. N2 by N1 is 2. Not good for me. N2 by N1 is 3. Just fine. This is okay. N2 by N1 is once again 3. This is also okay. So the only option where I can see that uh, uh, my T2 by T1 will not be equal to 27 is if N1 is equal to 3 and N2 equal to 6 where N2 by N1 turns out to be 2. Uh, this is not what we need. We wanted it to be 3. So our final answer is B option. Okay, this is a pretty simple question. The Lewis structure of CO3 2 minus ion is, right? So yeah, pretty straightforward. What do we do? Uh, first of all, we decide upon a central atom, which we obviously will choose as carbon. Maximum number of bonds, uh, less number of atoms, most electropositive maybe even largest atom right okay so yeah so carbon is the central one now as far as lewis theory is concerned shape and all is not very relevant all that we look at is we try and see to it that octet of everybody should be complete right carbon can form a maximum of four bonds we have three oxygen atoms so out of these two i'm going to um you know one oxygen atom i'm going to form a double bond with carbon so yeah and then there are two oxygen atoms left. So I'm going to form two single bonded oxygen atoms. And then on top of that, because even then oxygen octet won't be complete, right? So I'm going to put one more electron on top of it because I'm seeing CO3 2 minus overall two negative should be there. If I give a negative charge here, negative charge here, I'm basically giving one one electron extra. So their octet should get complete, right? Oxygen originally has two lone pairs and two single electrons but that uh, one single electron i gave one extra electron so that also has become a lone pair now right similarly same with the other oxygen atom also originally it had two lone pairs and two single bond or uh, single electrons one electron was used here one more electron was unpaired but i gave it one more electron to make it minus so i have one more here so i have three lone pairs on two of these oxygen atoms where there is a minus one each right so there is a minus charge here and there is a minus charge here and then this normal um, double bonded oxygen atom is only having two lone pairs right so yeah what do i see i'm seeing that there should be something like this right i mean of course we know that the shape is going to be a uh, something that is affected by resonance none of these will be actual double bond or single bonds and none of these will have minus one that minus is uh spread around all throughout your species that's a different story but yeah this is the shape that we are looking at and this is exactly what we can see as far as uh, option a is concerned right in option b your carbon has five bonds not possible in your option c you have your carbon uh, which is only having six electrons even after bonding right if this is the case same is the case with d option as well there is no negative charge or anything that i put on carbon uh, so yeah no carbon is not satisfied even after bonding right so these are also wrong uh, the only thing that is actually true here or right here is obviously a option okay simple question here based on formula 
yeah. Uh, what is the maximum wavelength of line of Balmer series of hydrogen spectrum, right? So, uh, maximum wavelength is what we want. What do we know? Energy of a photon is supposed to be Hc by lambda. If lambda is maximum, energy has to be minimum, right? So, lambda max implies minimum energy. Now, as far as Balmer series is concerned, all Balmer series lines are those lines which are there because of transition to 2 right so we are eventually coming to 2 n is equal to 2 but the least energy i mean further away the electron is more will be the energy of transition right so a uh, uh, transition from 3 to 2 right 3 to 2 will have the least energy 4 to 2 will be having slightly higher energy 5 to 2 will be having even higher energy and so on so the least energy is corresponding to 3 to 2 transition right so uh, ridba constant is given to us approximately as 1.1 into 10 to the power 7 per meter right so what do you know we can use Rydberg equation 1 by lambda wave number is supposed to be equal to rh into z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square here what is n1 and n2 n1 is going to be 2 Palmer series and n2 i am going to take as 3 why because i have been told maximum wavelength which corresponds to minimum energy minimum energy is 3 to 2 transition so i am going to take n2 as 3 right so 1 by lambda will turn out to be equal to 1.1 into 10 to the power 7 per meter z square oh, of course hydrogen is what we are looking at so z is 1 z square is 1 into 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9 right so what is my value of lambda going to be equal to from here what i can see is that cross multiplying right so 1 by lambda was basically 1.1 into 10 to power 7 into 9 minus 5. Uh, 9 minus 4 is 5 divided by 9 into 4 is 36. So, lambda will turn out to be equal to 36 divided by 5 into 1.1 into 10 to power 7. Or I can write this as into 10 to power minus 7 meter. But then I can see all the answers are in nanometer, which is 10 to the power minus 9 meters, right? So what will I do? Instead of 10 to the power minus 7, I am writing it as 10 to the power minus 9 into 100, right? 10 to the power minus 7 is 10 to the power minus 9 into 100. Now, what is written here is basically a nanometer, right? So I can uh, say that therefore lambda will be equal to 3600 divided by 5 into 1.1. This is the answer in nanometer. 36500 uh, 36, divided by 5 will be how much? 7 is 35. Then I have 10. So 720. Right? 720 divided by 1.1. Right? 1.1 is... Okay, so 1.1 can be taken as 10 by 9. Right? So 10 by 9 is how much? 1.11111. Right? Uh, obviously not exact but yeah so approximately i can take this as 720 divided by 10 by 9 right so uh, this is going to be 72 into 9 but yeah understand that instead of 1.1 i have actually taken 1.111111 right so i have taken a slightly larger denominator so my answer will be slightly smaller than the actual answer here i am getting 72 into 9 which is 630 plus 18 right 648 nanometer so my answer will be slightly less than the actual answer let's look at an answer which is slightly greater yeah so i can see something which is slightly greater which is 654 nanometer right 648 is mine something greater is 654 very close to it nothing else is in fact greater than 648 out here so no tension at all my final answer is b option